At this time, we just want to welcome you once again to our second portion of our evening meetings. We are going to be talking about obesity. Before we get started, why don't we have a word of prayer? Father God, thank you so much for the cooking class. Thank you for the food that you provided us. And thank you, Lord, for giving us the healthier alternative to eat. Lord, you've given this to us not to annoy us, not to take away fun, but to enhance our lives, to enrich our lives. Please, uh, may we worship you in all things, especially in the way that we eat. Tonight, as we hear this presentation on obesity, we pray that you would please open our minds and our hearts to receive your message. And we ask that you would please bless Adriana with the words that uh, you need her to speak. Um, and Lord, as everybody is uh, listening, we pray that you would speak to them in a very powerful way. We pray for those who could not be with us and those who may be on their way. We thank you and we praise you and we love you. In Jesus' name, let everyone say amen. amen. At this time, I want to introduce to you Adriana. She's going to be uh, presenting obesity. So please give her a round of applause. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you so much. Good evening, everyone again. Um, it's again a pleasure to be with you over here. Um, I think he, okay, I think he's giving me sound. Um, can everyone hear, hear me? Yes. yes okay. That's better. Um, I want to start with a word of prayer again because uh, um, I feel privileged to be here, and I feel that it's privileged for God to use me to be in front of you. So I'm going to kneel for a word of prayer. You don't have to, but I will kneel. Dear Heavenly Father, I come one more time before your presence, Lord, and asking for um, an empowerment of the Holy Spirit. Father, it is such a great privilege to be here in front of your children, to be speaking such a great topic as obesity. Father, you know that we need to overcome appetite, you know, we need to be temperate, to be able to overcome many other things in our lives. So give us the Holy Spirit to overcome, like you have said, all things are possible to Christ, which is strange me. So we pray for each one of us over here, and for those who are going to be teaching their family members, that you will empower them as well, Heavenly Father. Give me clarity in your speech. And open our minds, and everybody can be awake um, to understand this message. So, Father, thank you again for this privilege, and I pray that you help all of us with this topic. In the name of your Son Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Amen. So, obesity, um, and we are talking again. It's another topic of a very better choice by uh, New Star Global, and we're gonna be covering uh, obesity. Uh, it is a, a topic that it will affect all of us since 68% of the United States adults are suffering from overweight or obesity. That's a really high number, 68%. So I think it's a very interesting topic. Um, obesity is one of the number one health... Um, can everybody see it over there? Um, obesity is now the number one health threat in the United States. Um, how many of you knew that? Before, we probably thought it was about cancer, heart diseases, um, but we can see that obesity is number one now, right now. Um, during the past 20 years, we, we have seen a great increase on obesity among the United States population. And in this map, you can see the obesity rates in different states of the United States according to the CDC. The CDC is the Center to Seek, uh, Center to Seek, Control Center Disease. Um, we can see over here that, um, thank you, Ryan. So we can see over here in 1991, um, there were, um, thank you. Uh, we can see that a lot of the states, they have, uh, most of the states actually have uh, obesity rates of less than 15%. And a few of them, it has um, uh, rates of less than 20%. And as you can see, you don't see in, the, in this screen any of over 20%. And as we're going to go through, and that was in 1991. And as we're going to go over the slides, I want you to see the colors that are going to be changing. So how many of the states among the United States are going to become over 20%? And um, 
Also, there is going to be some that are going to change to over 25%. Um, if you think about it, that's a really great number to be 25% of the population um, overweight. So let's go to the next slide. So as you can see over here in this next slide, uh, in 2001, um, there were um, more uh, numbers greater than 20% than the, the 15%. So we can see that our number is increasing. And not only is increasing, but we already start seeing um, one of the states increasing up to over 25%. Uh, that's Mississippi or Missouri? I think that's Missouri. Yeah, I think that's Missouri. Who is good in geography over here? Mississippi. Mississippi. Okay. In 2005, we have a, in 2005, we can see we have a new category over here. Not only, how many blues do we see there now? Yeah. Only one. And how, what is the percentage of uh, that group? It's less than 15%, right? So basically that 15% is 15% is out of the picture. And now we have numbers. Most of the population in the United States is over 20%. Uh, we also have the now a new numbers. Four states over three states have now uh, over 30%. So that's, those numbers are really increasing. Let's go to 2009. What do you think about this 2009? Not only do we have a couple states less, over 25%, over but we have um, a lot of the states, now about 33 states, that their numbers have increased to close to 30%. And then we also have um, nine states that have increased over uh, 30%. Uh, and we have over here the only state that we have um, is only one that is less than 15%. So those numbers are really increasing, and this is from 2009. That's Colorado. That's Colorado. Mm -hmm. Good, yeah. So we can see over here um, the three years together, how um, obesity rate has changed over the last um, you know, 20 years. So we can see that 1990, they were hardly less than 15%. Um, most of the United States were less than 20, uh, 15%. And in, in 2009, there is only one state at that rate. So obesity has its own device. What, what can we do? Why are we doomed to fail? 45, 45% of men, um, and 25% of women are trying to lose weight at one time. But only one in five are really taking the steps to what it is to be losing weight. You want to take less calories and you want to exercise a little bit more. And I know most of us, we like a magic pill where we could take and say, well, um, you can do that. I mean, somebody say that they were it would be nice if they can come out with uh, some donuts where you can, you know, actually eat all the donuts you can. But one thing I promise you, once you start switching from a plant-based diet, uh, you can eat a lot and you're not going to gain weight. Um, because um, what happened with plant-based uh, foods, they have a lot of bulk because they have a lot of fiber and they also have a lot of water. So once you start making that transition, you're gonna start seeing that um, you're gonna start losing your weight. Um, I was, as many of you know already, I was raised in Colombia and I was raised vegetarian. And my whole life I have kept a good weight, but once I moved to the States, I actually adopted the American diet. And so my diet in the morning was my bagel with my cream cheese, with my eggs, and my cup of coffee. And I thought I could never stop eating that. And for lunch, I would have my Big Mac, uh, french fries, and a Coke, or I would have two tacos with Coke or french fries. And for dinner, what do you guys think I would have for dinner? 
Okay. Not really steak, but pizza, which is a lot easier to just put it in microwave and eat. And then on top of that, you have to have some dessert, right? So I will have either ice cream or I will have a cheesecake. Cheesecake was one of my favorite things. So that's why I'm going to show you a recipe tomorrow, a vegan cheesecake. Um, so when I put myself into that diet, I was about 25 pounds over to what I am right now. And you know, you just when you when you eat it that way, you're not gonna gain 25 pounds all in one week. You're gonna gain that gradually. So you don't start seeing the changes, you go up in one size, and then the next couple of six months you go in another size, and then the next couple of months you go in another size, and you don't really notice. You just go shopping and you're like, well, this doesn't fit anymore, so just try another size. So you just that's how you just don't see it until it creeps in and then you are overweight. And what happens when you are overweight? You really are sometimes a little bit more tired. You don't have the energy. Um, I can tell you now, I do have more energy now than I have ever before. I love to go running uh, because of time. I don't run as much, but one of my enjoyments was going to run for nine miles or 12 miles. I really used to enjoy that. Now, because of time, by God's grace, I work full time as a dental hygienist, and besides that, you know, God um, is open opportunities to do ministry too. So that's why I don't have that much time to run. But I can tell you, you feel a lot more energetic. Sometimes at the office, will I used to have coffee, and I would think, how how am I going to have enough energy back? Well, when you drink those green smoothies or those green juices, trust me, you're gonna have a lot of energy. So sometimes at work, they will ask me, "Are you still drinking coffee again?" I say, "No, I just have my green smoothie." So anyway, let's continue over here. So the disease um, attributed to overweight. Um, some of the leading diseases cause of death in the United States for these diseases are cancer, heart disease, diabetes, and a stroke. What do you think? What do you think what this is causes these problems? What is the number one leading to lead to cancer, heart disease, diabetes, and a stroke? Overweight, exactly. So overweight is gonna be the leading cause for these leading diseases in the United States. Um, many of you that come from other countries, you see that as we adopt the American lifestyle, then we start you know, the diseases in those countries they start rising again. As I was mentioning what we do in the cooking class, Dr. Elselstein and Dr. Campbell, they both got together and did one of the most amazing studies that has been undertaken in history for health. They actually got together and they went, they did a China study. And they noticed that people who adopted, you know, because who were more wealthy and were able to eat meat and uh, animal products, they actually were the ones who have the cancer, they're the ones who have the diabetes, and they're the ones who actually were at risk of um, uh, the American diseases. So they noticed that the people who were not able to buy these foods, they were vegetarian, not because they wanted, but because of choice. Not, not by choice, but because they didn't have the food enough for it. So these people actually were the healthiest, and they were living the longest. So um, with this study, we can see that what we eat it really matters, um, you know, for uh, eating diseases. Um, this is one of the studies, um, the NEJM, uh, compare weight with cancer uh, deaths. Um, weight is increased as um, the risk of dying from nearly all of the leading types of cancer. This study, you know, this study compares um, this. Um, uh, results with uh, overweight. Researchers report that as many as 90,000 people, um, cancer deaths will be as prevented each year if Americans maintain a healthy weight. 90,000. That's a huge number, 90,000. Um, ideal weight for men. If you weigh, I mean, if you height is 5'4 uh, or 5'3 or 5'9, you're going to multiply the four men. You're going to multiply that number by 6 and you're going to add 106. So you can tell your idea away. 
So if you're by eight or by nine, you multiply nine times six and you add 106 and that's gonna give you your ideal weight. For women, you're gonna take the same rule of thumb, you're gonna multiply if you're by four or by three, you're gonna multiply that four by five and you're gonna add 100 and that's gonna give you your ideal weight. Um, and some people, you know, they're a little bit of a thicker frame. So if you want to know if you're a little bit of a thicker frame, what you can do, you can take um, your uh, thumb and your index, and you can put it around your wrist. And if you cannot touch that, that makes you add a little bit of uh, a thicker uh, frame. So people with thicker frame, you can weigh a little bit more of that ideal number. So um, that's, you know, some, it gives you an idea how to, you know, measure that. So for, uh, for men, you take whatever extra you have over five, um, and then you multiply it by six, and you're going to add 106. For women, you're going to multiply that number over five, uh, eight, twelve, and you're gonna multiply that by five and you're gonna add a hundred. And that's gonna give you your idea of weight. But you add a hundred. <laughs> like if you're if you're five four, I don't really know if you're six four, I guess you multiply, you know, uh, that number after the four and, and yeah, but if you're five four, you multiply five only? Uh, that's a good question, Auntie. I don't know. <laughs> so I, I just know that that's a, a measurement that they give you if you're five. I, I was actually talking with my uh, friends about that. What about your five feet or your other five feet? What do you do? So, multiply by one, I guess. Yeah, multiply by one and then you. Five. She can't. You should wait on this one. Yeah, for women it's uh, plus 100. We multiply by five plus one. One plus one twenty for I mean, we were doing it, and we were like, "What? That's not an idea. Wait, that's you know, that's like pretty, pretty slim. So yeah. I'm obese. The friend size, we already talked about that, but um, so body mass index. Many of you are very familiar with this terminology, right? What is body mass index? Who knows in this room what is that? That's gonna be, Brian probably knows that, but that's actually gonna be a measure between your height and your weight. So that's the body mass index. That's the best way to know if a person is overweight. So um, we're gonna continue to, um, with this. Um, so for instance, if your BMI of 25 is 25 over above 25, that means, uh, and that means you're overweight. And if you're about 5'4", and your uh, weight is about 145 pounds, you can weigh that weight too, that means you're overweight. If your BMI is over 30 or uh, 30, you're gonna be in your obese side. And if you're 5'4", and you weigh about 186, that is kind of the same, you know, thing. If your uh, BMI is 40 or over 40, you're more really obese. Uh, what does that mean, more really obese? Who knows what does that mean? <laughs> it's very dangerous. That means you can, at any time, at any moment, you can do size of anything, basically. You know, it's just like a walking bone. It just happens, you just happen. Um, so if, if you have a BMI of 18.5, to 25, you're gonna be in a healthy weight. But if you're about 5'4 and you weigh 135 pounds, that's a good weight too. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, so, <laughs> so the EPI study, as uh, they were mentioning yesterday, this EPI study is an European study. And the four lifestyle factors together appear to be associated with as much as 80% reduction in the risk of developing of the most common deadly chronic disease. Um, so this study shows that healthy weight is one, uh, regular smoking, regular exercise, and healthy diet. 
So a healthy uh, weight. If a person, for instance, is um, 180 pounds and you lose 18 10% uh, of that um, pounds, that's going to be 18 pounds. That means you're going to reduce the risk of any disease or any cancer by 25 to 75 percent. That is huge. Only by losing 10 percent of that weight. Uh, never smoking. Regular exercise. If you're exercising regularly about three and a half hours a week, that's going to give you a really good, um, you know, you're going to reduce that, reduce that risk by 10 percent. If you're healthy diet. If you eat more fruits and vegetables, as we were talking, when you eat um, more of uh, fruits and vegetables, what happens with that, it has a lot of water and a lot of fiber. So you're gonna feel more full faster if you eat more healthy foods. Refined foods, the problem with that is that um, our stomach has sensors in the stomach. So it will take, if you take 500 calories of pure fat, your sensors is gonna feel, if your stomach is this big, it's just gonna feel not even one third of your stomach. So what happened with those sensors? The sensors are not sensing that you already ate something. So you're gonna eat more, right? So you're gonna add probably another 1,000 calories, right? Then just in one meal for your sensors to be able to feel, to, to start feeling that you put something in your stomach. And you actually add 1,500 calories of pure fat and you're still feeling like you're not completely satisfied. And what's gonna happen two hours later, you're gonna be hungry again because those calories are just gonna be going really fast. But if you have a 500 calories of bulk of um, fiber, you actually, your stomach is gonna start sensing that you're getting full. So you're not gonna need as much and you're gonna actually eat more and, and, and feel a lot fuller, you know, faster. So you can, and with grains and fruits and vegetables, you're gonna be able to, to eat a little bit more and feel more satisfied longer. Um, I know that people, when you start making that transition, people say, oh, can you, I, I mean, if you tell me that 10 years ago I was gonna be eating this way, the way that I am now, I will tell you you're crazy because I will say no way. Uh, but as you start jumping into this new lifestyle, and I will encourage uh, all of you that think that you're not going into any diet. You are totally following a new lifestyle. And when you go into that, you're gonna find out that you're not only eating fruits and vegetables all the time. No, it is more, it's much more than that. You're gonna find out start finding grapes and fruits and a lot of more things and ways to prepare your food that is gonna be really tasty. Um, so we can see um, increased uh, risk of ovarian related problems are also your waist size. Um, if a man has a 40 inch waist size, you're gonna have a risk of, uh, that's called central obesity. And you're gonna be more prone for heart diseases and for diabetes problems too. And if a woman has a, a waist of 35 inches, that's again central obesity, you're gonna be more uh, propensed to have uh, diabetes and, um, and also heart diseases. And sometimes we say, well, you know, I am diabetic because my, my whole family is diabetic. And if we think about it, yes, like they were mentioning, genetics has the guns and we pull the trigger. Um, my mom, she, her family, a lot of them that have died very young or had attacks. Well, my mom actually almost had a heart attack or she has a minor heart attack. And that really um, helped her to make all these changes. She said, well, if I don't change, I know I'm gonna die of a heart attack. And what happened, she actually started doing all these changes and by God's grace, mom haven't had any problem in the last like 20 years with her. Um, she actually, um, I was down here in the States when dad called me, mom was in the hospital with Russia because she actually had a minor heart attack. But since then, you know, um, by God's grace, she doesn't have to even take any, um, you know, antibiotics or nothing like that. 
Same my dad, my dad and his side of the family. Um, I have already two aunties have died of cancer. I have a cousin that has been battling with cancer for the last 10 years, and another cousin that already lost his vision at age 41 because he has a tumor that has been battling in his brain for the last like five years. So I, in my family, we have, from my mom's side, I have the problem, the heart problem, and from my dad, the cancer problem. So I also decided myself that it, it would be best for me to do the best I can, and I leave the rest to God. Um, so we can see over here that definitely um, making those changes is going to be really good. Um, the good news. Um, over here is achieving a healthy weight is possible with the proper food choices, like we talk about it, portion sizes and regular physical activity. Um, this is kind of funny because you say if the human body is 90% of water, how can I be to, how can I have 25, 23% of body fat? And I think many of us as that, you know, if, they, if we have more water, how can I be, you know, have all that body fat, but is there? So I'm mixing fast. Losing 10% of your current body weight may significantly improve your health. And we talk about that already. Losing, if you're 180, you lose 10%, that's 18 pounds. That's going to cut your risk of uh, cancer and leading diseases by 25 to 70%. So only losing 10% of your body weight if you're overweight or two inches of your waist. That's going to also reduce that. Um, every extra pound takes about um, one month from your life to spend. 60 pounds overweight will cost you five years. And if you have 100 pounds over your normal healthy, the normal healthy weight, you're going to lose about 10 years of your life. Um, what is the formula for overweight? You will eat more calories and less calories out. That's the way how we gain weight. Um, what is a calorie? Most of us, we know that it's something that we should avoid or something that we shouldn't be eating, right? So that's the calorie. It's a unit, um, it's a unit of heat. Uh, that's actually what is a calorie. So calories burn up to produce heat and mass in muscular activity. So actually it gives us, you know, uh, most, for muscular, heat to, for muscular activity. But excess calories will store as fat. So when you eat too much, it's just gonna, the body cannot produce it, so it's just gonna store it as fat. Um, 3,500 calories is gonna equal a one pound of body fat gain. An extra 100 calories a day will give you 10 pounds a year. Only 100 calories a day. And how many of us, we have sometimes an extra 100. So that's a good thing to wait, to think. If you start, Maybe cutting 100 calories a day, you're going to be losing 10 pounds in one year. That's good news. That's great news. Um, the formula for weight loss. You want to take less calories and burn more calories. That's going to be a good... Um, um, how to lose one pound a week um, or fat a week. So you can cut your food intake by 500 calories a day for seven days, and that's going to be cutting down to... Um, one pound a week. If you if it's too much, 500 calories a day, then you have 250 calories a day. We can do that. Just have the ex less two cookies and maybe less one donut, and you can cut 500 calories very easy. Um, if you cut 250 calories in two months, you're gonna be already losing uh, two pounds, and in one year, you're gonna be losing 24 pounds. That's really good news because how many of you can think that you can lose uh, 250 calories a day? Right? A lot of you can do that. Perfect. So, um, how calories is up? Let's see, one healthy potato. People say, well, the potatoes are fatty. Potatoes are gonna make me gain weight. It's not the potatoes, um, folks. It's gonna be what you put in the potato because one single wow. potato is only 140 calories. But if what you put in the potato, that's what's good. So let's see over here. One potato, 140. So if you add sour cream or butter to that potato, that 140 goes to two, uh, 420. Hash brown, make that one single potato, 520. And then french fries, 530. And those really good potato chips, 1,200 calories. That same one potato. Um, 
Also, if you eat one apple, that apple is going to be 75 calories. And if you eat um, apple pie de la mode, you have to eat eight apples to be able to have the same 600 calories. How many of you can sit down and eat um, eight apples all at once? Okay? <laughs> Pastor say he can. So, um, you definitely, that's going to be um, something that we can think about it, okay? Um, also, over here, let's look at this um, really good like lunch, for instance. If you have a salad with one slice of bread, your broccoli, and maybe a little small fish, uh, baked potato with salsa, and skin milk, uh, which I would recommend maybe almond milk, it's going to be the best calories of that, uh, baked apple pie uh, with dates and walnuts, that's only 685 calories. That's not bad. That's really good for a whole lunch. That's perfect, right? So now, let's gonna add dressing to that salad. And that's gonna add a few more. Let's add a little bit of butter to that salad. Let's add to the broccoli, let's put a little bit of cream cheese. And let's go ahead and put to the fish tartar sauce. So, um, to the baked potato, we put Hollandaise sauce. And to the skim milk, we don't want that, so we want the whole milk. And then we to the baked apple with dates and walnuts, we're gonna have an apple pie de la mode. La mo. So that's gonna give us 1875 guys. That's three times that. So um, how to cut calories um, without changing what you eat? Change what you drink. When you are thinking in the, okay, now I don't, I'm not ready to change my diet. I mean, you can think that way and say, you know what, I like what I eat, but start with your drinks. With the drinks, they will sneak up and you can actually drink a lot of calories. I used to go to Starbucks every single day when I was going to Loma Linda. I used to go and have um, a mocha. I used to love mochas. And I used to have a um, one of cookie or the banana bread that they have. So I don't know how many calories were there, but I'm pretty sure there were a lot of calories there. Um, so it's a really good, um, remember, 3,500 3, calories is one five body fat gain. And if you have one soda and two cups of coffee with cream and sugar, right there, you're gonna be, um, it, it will take you almost 12 days to get one pound because that's 300 calories a day. So in less than 12 days, you're gonna already gain a pound drinking your soda every day and your two cup of coffee. So, um, what is the solution? Water. I know water doesn't taste too good at first. Put a lime, put a lemon, and maybe put a little bit of uh, some twistedness uh, in sweetness at first, or something that it will taste a little bit better, but eventually you're gonna get used to, to that. Also, um, how does uh, calories a sneak up? The bigger the snack, tell me to finish the phrase. The more the, the bigger the snack. <laughs> So also another way, guys, that you can, that calories can sneak in is going to be when you're snacking. So we're going to say, well, mid-morning, I want to have my coffee with my cream and sugar, and then one donut. Um, Mid-afternoon, you're tired, you want to just, and it's hot, you want to have your soft drink and a candy bar because you want a little bit of energy. And late afternoon, you have coffee with cream and sugar and three small cookies because your energy is already a um, little bit lower. And for TV, of course, you want to have some soft drinks, potato chips, and cheese crackers. Um, so that's just in the snacking. That's not counting your uh, breakfast, uh, lunch, and dinner. That was 15, over 1,500 calories right there, just in the snacking. Um, so if what you do when you crave a snack, drink a big glass of water, and then when you drink water and you still feel like it's not satisfying, have some veggies, have some fruits, have some fruits and then take it with you and you do that. Of course, eventually you want to cut the snacking, but for now, you want to go ahead and, and do that, it's going to help you. Um, also, like we were, we're talking about, make sure you start with a good, healthy breakfast. If you're going to have a lot of refined sugars in your breakfast, if you're going to have sugary cereals, um, and don't and coffee, you're going to be hungry about two hours. But if you have your vegetables, um, if you have your vegetables and a good um, uh, grains and some oatmeal, it's going to really cut down the cravings for snacking. Uh, so also, 
um, I'm, they're giving me signals, but I only have one minute. So avoid refined processed foods, eat more uh, foods as uh, growing. I can see that a lot of you love to grow your vegetables and everything. I think that's awesome. So yeah. you can have more of those growing vegetables. Yeah, you know, and there you go, faster. Uh, whole grains, bread, fruits, and vegetables. And also, I emphasize a lot, uh, eat a good breakfast. And um, the US um, News World Report it emphasizes the same. If you have a good breakfast and you eat more um, fruits and vegetables, they add a lot of bulk to your uh, stomach, and so you're gonna tend to eat less. Why? Because you're gonna have no fiber. No fiber. And I think I'm gonna cut over here. Uh, so look at these two platters. Have the same calories, but which one do you think you're gonna finish up sooner? <laughs> so, that's why, um, and, and I can tell you, you're not gonna eat uh, those vegetables. You're not gonna finish up. So, uh, because it has a lot of fiber and it has a lot of water. So, um, I'm gonna finish up over here because we're running a little bit late. But thank you so much for your attention. All right, thank you, Adriana, for that presentation. We have been so blessed to have physicians come in each evening to answer questions about our presentations. And at this time, I'd like to introduce our physicians for the evening. I'll be uh, answering our, or doing our Q&A. Um, is it going to be both of you or just one? Oh, both of you. Come on up. Let's give a round of applause to our physicians that are coming up right now. All right. I'm going to have the physicians uh, introduce themselves, and at this time, if you want, if you have any questions regarding the presentation, this will be the time to do that. Thank you. I'm Angelina Molina. I am an internal medicine and pediatrics physician with some additional training in pediatric cardiology. I don't need that. Thank you. I can speak up. Uh, my name is Alex. Uh, I am an ER physician. I don't know how this works, but <laughs> question and answer. Question. Why question? On that, just they put visible oils and fats. What do they mean by uh, eat more vis visible? <coughs> I have no clue what visible oils and fats are. Like, do they mean like eat the walnuts instead of the oil? Or? I think that that would be a good question. Yeah, is, uh, is it a dietitian or I would eat the the walnuts, uh, you know, versus the the oil. But I'm sorry, I don't know much about nutrition per se. I, I tend to see I tend to see uh, when it gets to the extreme and all the complications of it. So I think this is very good that you guys are doing this. Uh, but, Patients with heart problems that are obese and the complications, uh, being obese, well, having heart problems is a complication of being obese. Being obese has a lot of, brings a lot of issues. Um, being diabetic, high cholesterol, um, all that stuff comes with, with being obese. And again, I, I tend to see uh, the extreme of it, which is a heart attack, a stroke. So once you get to that point, and what are the ages? Like, um, it tends to be a little bit different depending on the race, uh -huh. but middle age is when you start seeing um, the complications. 50, 60, like 70 or so. Um, so I'll add on that as well as far as the ages. The, um, the incidence of obesity is growing um, in the pediatric population too, to where almost 50% of children are obese. And it comes from parents' eating habits as well. I tend to tell my, my patients um, <coughs> that, um, what's the word? You want to nip this in the butt pretty, pretty early. 
is once you start seeing those complications, that means that you've been obese for a good while, you've been eating bad for a good while. And it's not just a couple of years, this is many, many, many years. Uh, having heart disease doesn't occur from one day to the other. Um, you know, having strokes doesn't occur from one day to the other. Being diabetic doesn't occur. It's never too late. It's never too late. Ever, ever, no. It's never, ever too, too late. Uh, I don't know any statistics, and I apologize. Should have prepared better. Uh, about if you start at a certain age, how much you can improve. And I apologize. I don't know anything about, about that. I can research it, and next time I can be better prepared. But uh, yes, at any age at all, lifestyle changes is good. And, I've had patients tell me about how can I start? They're 400 pounds. They're like, hey, how can I start? And I tell them simple, easy steps. Okay. It's very good for you guys to learn how to count calories and how to eat properly and all that, but it is complicated, as you can tell. Okay, adding all that, a lot of people are gonna say, I'm gonna quit, it's too hard. So simple steps, take a 10 minute walk, Remove stuff from your diet. Yes, sir. I'm oh, sorry, I don't mean to cut you off. I was oh, no, just, you're fine. just have a question after you drink. Okay, just just remove stuff from, oh, from your diet. If you drink Coke, if you drink five Cokes a day, go to three Cokes a day. <laughs> simple, simple steps. Or no Coke. Or no but it's hard. Mm -hmm. It is very difficult. It is very difficult to. Gradual. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then just small steps. Yeah. 10 minute walk. Uh, you know, do that for a couple of days, two, three, four days. Then go, you know, 15 minute walk, then 20 minute walk. Yeah. Then when you can walk <coughs> up each other breath, you know, jog a little bit. Uh -huh. But easy, small, simple steps. Okay. Yeah. Amen. Yes, sir. So pediatric questions. Uh, I have a, a three boys, and I've noticed. Uh, the last two kids that I have, and I don't know if it's related to diet, like in the middle of the night, they would have any, uh, is it, I don't know if it's a growing pain, growing pain. they would have a severe pain, like in the middle of the night, they would grab their legs, and they would cry in the middle, they would try to massage them and kind of ease the pain, and that happens a lot of times, so I, I read about it, I just didn't know if that's related that to, I don't know if it's cramp, but they would have that. I have a two-year-old and a five-year-old. So a two-year-old and a five-year-old typically don't have growing pains. Growing You'll pains. typically see that um, your teenagers, when they start hitting a growth spurt, uh, it could be cramps in the, you know, at night. Uh, think about their diet, how much potassium are they eating, are they dehydrated, do they have enough water? Uh, but I don't so much think that it, it to me, would not be growing pains if they were that. I guess everything in the internet is not real, right? <laughs> so, cramps could occur for many reasons. Um, the primary reason for cramps are going to be your, and this is for muscle cramps, dehydration, um, electrolyte abnormalities, low calcium, low potassium. Okay. Uh, you'll see bigger, more obese people get a lot of cramps from them because they don't get their uh, proper uh, electrolytes. Well, that makes so sense. I mean, I, mean I'm, I feel them really well. I'm, I'm very healthy conscious. And I just realized that it comes to your concern you were saying. Uh, I don't really give them a lot of water, but I give a lot of fruits and juice and stuff. So uh, that's the one thing about nutrition kids is that you tell parents to, to make sure that they drink a lot of water. And so when, they see, when I see them in the clinic, I say, how much water do they drink? Do they drink a lot of water? Yeah, they drink plenty of water. Well, what does that mean? They drink a bottle of water a day. <laughs> <laughs> That's not so much plenty of water. <laughs> you know, really it's a cardiology <laughs> clinic. We tell them, you know, you need to really be drinking 80 ounces of water a day. You know, that's 80 divided by 30. That's three or four of those 20 ounce bottles of Ozarka uh, a day for kids. Okay, so adults should be drinking up to 100 ounces of water a day, or um, 12 of those bottles. It's about three liters of water a day to be properly hydrated as an adult. Or the
Cobra brand cheaper. <laughs> for our physicians this evening. Wonderful. Let's give them a round of applause. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Who's this courage tonight? <laughs> Don't worry. God always has an answer for us, right? Yeah. Yeah. So now we have all these facts that we learned from obesity, and from for for this whole week as well, and even from last night. Praise the Lord that God don't leave us where we're at, right? Yes. Amen? Amen. 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 So let's try and put away help for a little bit for a little bit. And let's try to bring something out from his word. Let's say um, the sanctuary. How important is the sanctuary to God? How it how important is the sanctuary to you? What would you do if I walk in here and start yelling, start playing R and B or rock or rap? What would you do to me? Would, would you guys be angry or would you guys be upset or kick me out? Thank you. Call 911. <laughs> Would this place be any different from the world if we had that in here? Would it be different, right? Let's see for the old let's go back to the Old Testament. What does the Old Testament say? What do the people use the sanctuary back then? Why did the people build the sanctuary? So the Lord will dwell with them. Exodus 25, what? Eight. Verse 8. Let them make me a sanctuary so that I may what? Dwell. That I, that's God, not me, may dwell 
among what? Yeah. Among them, right? So in the Old Testament, we have we see all those different sanctuaries. The first sanctuary was where? Eden. Eden. Thank you, Pastor. Eden. Eden, and then came the what? Mosaic sanctuary. And then the, what's the next one? Solomon's temple. And what's the next one? Who you knows the, the next one? Me. The temple with no walls. Ezekiel's temple. It's a temple that Ezekiel had a vision of it. And he wanted to build. This was a vision that God was giving Ezekiel for the people to build. But the people ended up building what? Another sanctuary which is the Serubable sanctuary, and that's the sanctuary that God did not bless because they did not follow God's blueprints. So that's, that's the Old Testament. Then come the New Testament. The New Testament is when what? What does God compare that sanctuary? Me. The Holy Spirit. Your body. Your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. First Corinthians 6, verse 19 to 20, it says, Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, whom you have from God? You are not your own, for you were bought with the price. So glorify God in your body. So if God relates your body to a temple or sanctuary, should we not treat our body the way we treat our physical sanctuary? Mm -hmm. Reverence. I'm someone. I'm from Samoa, where an island where people are really stubborn. For myself as well. Before I usually say, you know, it's my body. I do whatever I want to do. I eat whatever I want to eat. Uh -huh. But sad to say, what does the Bible say? It's not our body, right? It's God. It's the body that God made for us. If Jesus Christ was um, comparing his body as well to as a sanctuary, Jesus was our example. And so we are, right? We're supposed to follow what? Jesus' example. So... Our body belongs to God. So if our body belongs to God and it's the temple for the Holy Spirit to dwell in, don't you want to have a clean house or sanctuary? Yeah. Clean body? Don't you want to have a clean body and be temperance for what you put in your body? Why not start now? If you are overwhelmed with everything that you are learning this week, or even tonight, remember, do not be discouraged. For God is with you. Amen. Isaiah 41 verse 10 says, Fear thou not, for I am thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. I will help thee. I will uphold thee with the right hand of my what? Righteousness. And then John 16 verse 33 said, These things have I spoken unto you, that in me, in Jesus, ye may have peace. In the world, they have tribulation. But we have to cheer. Jesus have overcome the world. Amen. So we can do as well. Amen. Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, I pray that as much information that we are learning and tonight, even for, throughout this whole week, that we may not be overwhelmed with all that information, but as you give us the strength to make each step day by day, even if it's smaller step, Lord, but we know that you have overcome the world. So do we. So, Lord, I pray that you bless us and be with us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen.